Good afternoon. I'm Keith Carble, and on behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Don J. McDonald and the officers, non-commissioned officers, staff members, and cadets of the Dauntless Battalion, welcome to the Army ROTC commissioning ceremony for Widener and Westchester Universities. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to present to you the commissioning class of May 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem sung by Dr. Sharon Conowitz, the Soldier's Creed recited by Cadet Benjamin Dungan, and remain standing for the invocation to be given by Colonel Retired Wiley W. Johnson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the That our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land? I am an American soldier. I am a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient in my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. If you would, please join me in prayer. Gracious and almighty God, Lord of armies, today we honor these young men and women as they are commissioned second lieutenants. Father, they will need much in the years to come. They will need from you a reminder every day to listen and to learn. Father, that as they lead, that they must love those that they lead and teach. And Father, that as they serve this nation, that they might do so with faith and with courage and with integrity. Father, we also pray for the United States Army and its sister services. We ask you in this time of war for our soldiers and airmen, 
our Marines and Navy and Coast Guardsmen as they uh, are on the field of conflict, that your protection would be over them. Lord, that they would choose to do right in all manners. And Lord, that, uh, that there would be courage and victory on the field of battle. We pray for President Obama and our National Command Authority. We pray for righteousness as they guide and lead the United States military. And we ask you, Father, to bless the United States of America. And we pray in your name, amen. Please be seated. It is now my honor to present Lieutenant Colonel Don J. McDaniel, the Dauntless Battalion Commander and Professor of Military Science. President Harris, Mr. Christian, Provost Wilhite, deans, faculty, and most importantly, family and friends of these wonderful cadets. Thank you for attending this beautiful ceremony on this beautiful day. Uh, your attendance today will help make this a special occasion for these soon-to-be lieutenants. Today we will commission four new lieutenants, four from Widener and two from Westchester. We already commissioned four this morning at Villanova, and we've commissioned three lieutenants earlier this year in December. Uh, so another good batch of lieutenants for the United States Army. These young men and women today will receive their commissions from the President of the United States. So what are commissions? They are legal instruments the President uses to appoint and exercise direct control over qualified people to act as his legal agents to help him carry out his duties. So you will be acting on, the pres on behalf of the President of the United States after today. Congratulations. Before I introduce the guest speaker, a couple quick remarks. First, to all the parents and family members of these young men and women, I would like to say thank you for supporting them in their choice and joining the military. They could not have done this without your support. I still remember 30 years ago, because I was 17 years old, my mother had to sign the paperwork before I could go talk to the Army recruiters. Uh, and I came back and uh, told her I'd enlisted in the Army. And there was many, I hope for, proud mom, but I ended up with a very crying mother. Uh, and I know most of you probably went through the, some of those same emotions uh, when your son or daughter chose those same things. Uh, but I know you are all proud as well, even though you will go through periods of grief as your sons or daughters continue to, throughout their career to do many things uh, and various assignments. Remember though, what they really need from you is your support. The Army will ensure that they are properly trained and well equipped it is up to you and the rest of the American people to ensure that they have the emotional support to succeed, and succeed they will, I am sure. America's future is bright because they are great young men and women like these who have raised their hand and decided to come forward, and because of the way that you raised them to be that way. So please join me in giving these families a round of applause for what they've done to support these cadets. Cadets, soon to be lieutenants, today you will join a long line of military officers that have been commissioned by Widener and its predecessors. Widener, as you know, traces its roots back to 1821. The school began military training in 1858 as a Delaware Military Academy, eventually becoming Pennsylvania Military College, or PMC, until 1972, and then Widener University. A 150 plus year history of producing leaders of character for our nation's military. You see the Gettysburg streamer flying on your battalion colors behind you, earned by the cadets before you. Officers from this institution have served in, every, have served in their country in every major conflict since and continues to serve in combat today. The ba Dauntless Battalion continues the tradition of commissioning leaders, displaying character, honor, and above all, integrity. You not only have a legacy of the cadets who have commissioned here before you, but you now are a part of that proud history that will go forward. Lastly, I will remind you of the seriousness of the task of which you are about to undertake. You will be leading America's sons and daughters, future platoon leaders, in charge of 30 or so soldiers responsible for all aspects of their training and their well-being, signing for millions of dollars worth of equipment 
and potentially sent off to far off places to act on behalf of the national interest of the United States. You will be leading the best trained and equipped military in the world, but your leadership is what will make all the difference. They need leaders of character and unquestionable integrity. Your parents, this institution, and the Army have all imparted values and ethics on you, but remember the simple grandmother rule that I told you many times about in class. If you do something your grandmother will be proud of or embarrassed on Sunday, uh, well, you should be able to decide whether or not it's the right thing to do. So just think, would mom, would grandma, would they be proud or would they be embarrassed on Sunday when I go to church on what I've done? If you can make that judgment, you've probably made the right call. Your training and values you, you possess, I know, uh, you are capable of. You will meet these challenges and you will excel. With that, I wish you Godspeed and want to congratulate you with all you have accomplished in your four years you've been here. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. David A. Christian. Mr. Christian is best known for his veterans advocacy. He is a published author by McGraw-Hill and Simon & Schuster. He had four children, uh, graduate from Villanova University, and his son went on to serve in the Army Special Forces during Desert Storm. He's born in Gainesville, Florida, raised in Levittown, Pennsylvania. His mother and father served in World War II. While his mother's service was unique, and she served on the staff of General Douglas MacArthur. His father was a courageous typewriter repairman from Alabama. They met in the South Pacific because of a broken typewriter, and today there are no, broken, no typewriter repairmen in the military. He completed his high school at Woodrow Wilson High School. He completed Villanova University in 19 months by taking 27 credits a semester and graduated on the dean's list. In addition, he attended graduate programs at University of Pennsylvania, Villanova, Bryn Mawr College, and Middle, Middlebury, Vermont College. He re recently received his Juris, degree, Juris Doctorate Law degree from Rutgers Law School in 2011. Christian enlisted in the United States Army at 17, and after rapidly being promoted through the ranks to sergeant, he was admitted to the Army Officers Candidate School and commissioned at the age of 18. Today he is believed to be the youngest commissioned officer since the Civil War. He is an Airborne Ranger and Special Forces qualified. He was promoted to the rank of Captain at the age of 20. During his two tours of Vietnam, he was nominated for the Medal of Honor twice, received the Distinguished Service Cross, two Silver Stars, the Bronze Star, and seven Purple Hearts, to name a few. However, he was seriously burned with napalm in January 1969 and medically retired from the Army with full rights and benefits of an Army captain. Christian underwent many serious operations before launching his civilian career. He was elected the youngest national commander of the Legion of Valor and continues to serve on the National Board of Directors. Membership in this organization is restricted to those who have been awarded the Medal of Honor, Distinguished Service Cross, Navy Cross, or Air Force Cross. Christian was active politically in the Republican Party and received a Schedule C presidential appointment as liaison between the White House and the U.S. Department of Labor. He was a tireless advocate for veterans' benefits and wrote the legislation for Agent Orange and Post Traumatic Stress Disorder, PTSD. Christian worked four years as a senior advisor to the United States Senate on foreign relations, national defense, and veterans' benefits, and was housed in the then Senate, Senator John Kerry's office, now Secretary of State Kerry. Today, Christian has a 20-year federal service to include presidential appointments and service with the Department of Defense, Central Intelligence Agency, FBI, and the U.S. Department of State. He was the first American in Bosnia to greet the U.S. troops and serve the Senate during the implosion of the Soviet Empire in Moscow. He went on to be ambassador for economic and humanitarian aid in Chechnya. Returning to the States, Christian became CEO and president of Sandswire, a public corporation developing manufacturing and flying drones throughout the mountains in Afghanistan. Today, Christian is the pres president of DACVAL Corporation, manufacturing bond loading equipment for the U.S. Navy aircraft carriers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Mr. David A. Christian. Good colonel said everything. I don't have anything left to say. <laughs> I thank you all for being here today. You know, we don't know whether it's going to rain or, or the sun's going to come out. Every time we're bragging that the sun's going to shine today, the clouds loom over again. So let's just kind of hang in there with hope, and that's where our future is going to be, hope. I, I feel a kinship to this university. I was in 10th grade, and people came from this university, and they set up an office either in the Bellevue in Philadelphia or at 
the Union League, and they were interviewing people to come to Pennsylvania Military College. And I was one of the people they interviewed, and they said, if, you know, if you commit to us, you'll get a full scholarship. But my life took a different path, and I enlisted in the service, as the good colonel stated. I enlisted never thinking, you know, what tomorrow was going to bring. I just enlisted for one day, and to have a good day, and make it the best I could. Never thought about going through the ranks, never thought any of those things. But my life changed when I became commissioned. When I became a second lieutenant, I heard the words echo so many times in the halls of Officers Candidate School. I heard the words echo throughout all the military schools. Echoes of words of courage, leadership, all the, these distinguished words for distinguished people. And thinking, do they really apply to me? And how do they apply to me? A kid who grew up in Levittown, mother raised four kids by herself, mother served gallantly, and she got to pin my bars on when I graduated from Officer Candidate School and died just six months after that. I feel that I've been distinguished because I have people that are looking over me. There's a long line of warriors, a long line of soldiers that go back to Gettysburg, go back to the Revolutionary War, go back to the Peloponnesians. Anybody that's hit a battlefield knows the sacrifices. And the unique thing is, in every conflict, no matter what side you're on, you need leadership. You have people that work into the ranks of non-commissioned officers, which I was proud to be one. And then to be a commissioned officer. We call the commissioned officer a second lieutenant, a butter bar. And as many people know, everybody has a story about a second lieutenant. Everybody has a story about challenging a second lieutenant. Many of the people in the audience don't realize that you're part of the story. You may have been one of those lieutenants. I myself, as I think about leadership, I did not know how I was going to react. The first thing I did, I kept thinking I was too smart to be sent to war. Why would they send a guy with a brain to war? So I went to the Pentagon as a young commissioned officer, and I said, Ich spreche Deutsch, ich spreche Deutsch, aber nicht so gut. And the major there said, what did you say? I said, I speak German, but I speak German not so very good. Well, hold on a second, he said, hold on. And he called the sergeant major over, he said, say it again. And I said it again. The sergeant major extended his hand, the major standing there proudly. I'm saying, this is great, I'm going to Germany. Sergeant major says, congratulations, lieutenant, second lieutenant, I hopefully you will find a German colony in Vietnam. The major also shook my hand. I never found that German colony. But I did have tests. And these young men and women standing up here or sitting up here, you saw the march up here, the Ordnance Corps, Chemical Corps, Medical Corps, what other corps we have here, and engineers. You can look and you can read on a person's chest, if you've been in the military, who they are and where they've been very quickly. As I look and I see these young people, these young minute, in a few minutes, they will be minute second lieutenants, wondering how they will react. And I remember, after I went to the Pentagon, I went through jump school, and I was going through all these different schools, and I swore they had the wrong guy. I had ended up at Special Forces, JFK Special Warfare Center. And I got out of the car, and I was adjusting my Green Beret, and I, I knew I was just a second lieutenant. And the time comes, and it's come in everybody's ears of life. You lock eyes with somebody. And it's going to come in their life very, very soon. They're going to lock eyes with an enlisted man. I locked eyes with a sergeant major. We were both walking across the parking lot to the PX. The sergeant major saw me clearly, and I saw him clearly as it is a day today. And he ignored me. I said, Sergeant Major! And as I shouted across the parking lot, everybody's head turned. I said, Sergeant Major! 
report. Sergeant Major walked up to me and said, Sergeant Major, Larry Jordan reporting, sir. And Sergeant Major, I said, do you respect this Army? Do you respect the uniform? Do you respect your service? I don't care if you respect me, but you respect my rank. I worked hard to be a young second lieutenant. I expect a salute. My heart was racing in my chest, in my throat. The Jewish people, they have a saying they call it chutzpah. The Gentiles call it something else. Sergeant Major saluted me. Sergeant Major Larry Jordan, I returned his salute. We're still friends to this very day. Friends for life. That, I don't know if that's leadership. I don't know if it's courage. I don't know if that's stupidity. I don't know what that is. But that's what's going to face these young people to my left and to your right. In the military, we always had to say that. Not your right or your left, it's the military right or the military left. I can tell you that they are going to be challenged. The wars are changing. 68% of the injuries in the war on terrorism come from IEDs. 68% of our casualties come from IEDs. For those of you who do not know what an IED is, they take something, it could be a trash can, whatever, and they fill it with explosives. And those explosives, they mix in metal and glass and whatever else. They try to put as much explosives as possible for the biggest impact as possible. And when your vehicle is riding over it, unfortunately, they dial a phone number. It's set off either electronically or pressure release when they go over. A little pin pushes it down, and when, after it passes, it releases it and it blows it up. These people are going to have to react. Those are in the medical corps. It's called crisis management. You're going to see people coming in in stretchers, people coming in on choppers. They're going to be missing limbs, maybe missing eyesight. People in the medical corps will respond. It's called crisis management. They've got to lead, and they lead by example. They don't have to say a word. As they bring those stretchers into the hospital, these people will be the first line of defense in saving our sons and daughters. The ordnance man up here, the chemical warfare man up here, and the engineer up here will all be involved in defusing those IEDs that are taking almost 70% of our troops on the battlefield today. Many of the people do not even ever get a chance to identify the enemy. Say they've seen an enemy. The enemy never identifies himself or herself. And yet, they've been maimed or killed or hurt. And they're doing this in defense of a war on terrorism. They're doing this in defense of freedom. Many people in this audience today know the freedoms that they're still trying to defend, the people that are taking on the responsibility of being commissioned. The freedoms that we've lost. I can tell you there's people in this audience used to fly up to an airport in their car, run in, and jump on a plane. You didn't have to be there three hours ahead of time. You didn't have to go through security. People that crashed into the Twin Towers, the people that are hurting us and taking away our freedoms every day. Some goofball gets on a plane and he's got explosives in his boots. We got to take our shoes off at the airport. I'm glad we don't have to take off our underwear because one guy got on a plane with his underwear he had explosives in. We have to have a balance. And our leadership in that balance are the people in front of you. It's a great balance. I only wrote a few words today because I wanted the sun to stay shining. But as I tell you, I won't even look at the words. I'll just share from my heart. I've spoken at many a commencement, in many a great university. I did not have the same attachment as I do to this university, because I could have walked these hallow halls. But as I talk to the people in the universities, 
I speak mainly to the students that are getting their degrees, their diplomas to go out in life. And I ask them to be spectators, no. Participants, yes. Be a participant in life. Engage in life. Push away from the computer. Push away from your iPhone, your iPad. Engage in a conversation with your mother, your father, your aunt, your uncle. Life is so short. Engage and participate. And my charge to these new lieutenants, soon to be, they do not have to worry about engaging. They are being commissioned by the President of the United States. They are being commissioned and charged with participating in the defense of our nation. What they have to worry about and what the enemy has to worry about is leadership. When that IED goes off, there's confusion. People go in many different directions. The highest casualties amongst commissioned officers are company grade. Second lieutenants, first lieutenants, and captains. When you put the memorial together for the war on terror, which they say is turning down, everybody in America wants to believe that, but the enemy doesn't believe that, as is experienced in Boston just recently. This is our line of defense. And when that IED goes off, yes, the medical people will be trained and ready, but so also will be the engineers, the ordnance. So also will be the chemical. They will be ready. And as you're running out of that vehicle, as it's exploding, you're trying to grab and patch up people. You also have to remember that someone's trying to kill you. They're shooting you, and they're shooting at you. And what you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to do in this audience today, thank God, because of them. In an ambush situation, they then have to charge. If you're in the sights, if you've ever fired a weapon, you're in the sights and the scope of an enemy, the only way you can overcome the situation is charge. It's against human nature. Stand up, take charge, and physically charge at the person who's trying to take your life. That's what these people will have to do. It's really a burden. It's a hardship. It's an unusual thing that's commanded on them by the President of the United States. Are they old enough? Are they wise enough? Are they brave enough? Absolutely. By virtue of the fact they put on that uniform. And today they're willing to accept the responsibility as we go through the pinning on of the bars. I just want to say that please don't worry about these folks participating in life. They will, and you'll be proud of them. I want you to pray that when that time comes, they reach down into their gut. They have the courage and the strength to lead. That their leaders, starting with their mother, their grandmother, the colonel cracks me up and he always says, make sure you don't do it if your grandmother says it's okay or not okay. If your grandmother says it's not okay, grandmothers are a little easy. Make sure your mother's in there an awful lot too, because <laughs> the grandmothers give an awful lot of permission sometimes. So. When you're thinking about doing something right or wrong, throw everybody in in your family. Think, would they all be proud of me? And then think of that long line of warriors that went before you, whether it be enlisted men, privates, NCOs, or officers. And look at the flag, and look at the many thousands of threads in that flag, and say, I am now going to be a thread in that flag doesn't matter what my color or my creed is. I'm a thread in the flag, preserving and protecting freedom throughout the world. They have the responsibility to lead. They will lead. I salute them. I am happy to be here today. I thank the good colonel. And yes, I too will act and ask if my mother is proud of what I am doing. Thank you. God bless you. God bless your family up here.
On behalf of the officers, non-commissioned officers, and the cadets of the Donaldson Battalion, I'd like to present you with this gift. Token on behalf of your The cadets will now take the oath of office administered by a military commissioned officer, active or retired. Would all those who have been, <clears throat> will be administering the oath of office please move forward. At this time, feel free to move forward to take photos. Each newly commissioned officer will now be called forward individually for the traditional pinning on of their new rank of second lieutenant, for the first salute with a non-commissioned officer, and to receive their commissioning certificate from the professor of military science. Those of you who have been invited to assist with the pinning on of rank should come forward when your commissionee's name is read. Again, feel free to move forward during that period and take photos. Our first commissioned officer is second lieutenant Blake Crowther. Lieutenant Crowther is graduating from Westchester University with a degree in criminal justice. He is a graduate of the Leader Development and Assessment course. During his senior year, he served as the Battalion Command Sergeant Major and Delta Company Commander. He will serve the Army as an Ordnance Officer. He will begin his active duty career by attending the Army's Logistic Basic Officer Leader course at Fort Lee, Virginia. Lieutenant Crowther will have his rank pinned on by his father, Tim Crowther, and his uncle, Craig Rocky. Lieutenant Crowther will now receive his first salute from his grandfather, Corporal Retired Ted Crowther. What we just saw was the tradition that's associated with the hand salute and has withstood the test of time. The tradition is that a newly appointed officer is given a silver dollar to the first enlisted person to salute them after they've received their commission. The silver dollar is traditionally the only coin given in exchange for that first salute. The coin represents more than a dollar in currency. To every new officer, it has special significance. It represents symbolic receipt of respect due a newly earned rank and position. Lieutenant Colonel McDaniel will now present his commissioning certificate.
Congratulations, Lieutenant Crowther. Second Lieutenant Ryan Holbein. Lieutenant Holbein is graduating from Widener University with a degree in Computer Information Systems. He's a graduate of the Leader Development and Assessment course. During his senior year, he served as the Battalion S3 Training Officer and Alpha Company Commander. He will serve the Army Reserve as an Engineer Officer and will attend the Engineer Basic Officer Leader course at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Lieutenant Holbein will now have his rank pinned on by his mother, Faye Holbein, and father, Herb Holbein. Lieutenant Holbein will now receive his first salute from Staff Sergeant John Hines. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel McDaniel will now present his commissioning certificate. Congratulations, Lieutenant Holbein. <clears throat> Second Lieutenant Daniel Caracas. Lieutenant Caracas is graduating from Widener University with a degree in nursing. He's a graduate of the Leader Development and Assessment course. During his senior year, he served as the Battalion S4 Logistics Officer. He will serve the Army as a Nurse Corps Officer and will begin his active duty by attending the Nurse Basic Officer Leader Course at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas. Lieutenant Caracas will have his rank pinned on by his parents, Christina and Bob Casper. Lieutenant Caracas will now receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Jason Seberger. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel McDaniel will now present his commissioning certificate. Congratulations, Lieutenant Caracas. Second, Lieutenant Jordan Schenk. Lieutenant Schenk is graduating from Widener University with a degree, degree in civil engineering. He's a graduate of the Leader Development and Assessment course. During his senior year, he served as the Alpha Company First Sergeant and then Battalion Command Sergeant Major. He will serve the Army as a chemical officer and will begin his active duty by attending the Chemical Basic Officer Leader Course at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Lieutenant Schenk will now have his rank pinned on by his mother, Karen, and his father, Barry Schenk. Lieutenant Schenk will now receive his first salute from Master Sergeant Seberger. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel McDonald will now present his commissioning certificate.
Congratulations, Lieutenant Schenk. Second, Lieutenant Francis Smith. Lieutenant Smith is graduating from Widener University with a degree in nursing. She is a graduate of the Leader Development and Assessment course. During her senior year, she served as the Alpha Company First Sergeant. She will serve the Army as a nurse officer and will attend the Basic Officer Leader course at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas. Lieutenant Smith will now have her rank pinned on by her sister, Lauren Smith, and her father, Jeffrey Smith. Lieutenant Smith will now receive her first salute from her uncle, former Petty Officer First Class Alan Davis. Lieutenant Colonel McDaniel will now present her commissioning certificate. Congratulations, Lieutenant Smith. Second, Lieutenant Alexa Vaders. Lieutenant Vaders is graduating from Westchester University with a degree in criminal justice and a minor in information technology. She is a graduate of the Leader Development and Assessment course. During her senior year, she served as the Battalion and Delta Company Public Affairs Officer. She will serve the Army Reserve as a Medical Service Corps officer and will attend the Basic Officer Leader course at Joint Base San Antonio, Texas. Lieutenant Vaders will now have her rank pinned on by her mother, Linda Rodriguez, and her father, Louis Wisnowski. Lieutenant Vaders will now receive her first salute from her uncle, Specialist 5, retired George Wise. Lieutenant Colonel McDonald will now present her commissioning certificate. Congratulations, Lieutenant Vaders. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the posting of the orders. Attention to orders. The President of the United States has reposed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, valor, fidelity, and abilities of Blake Crowther, Ryan Holbein, Daniel Caracas, Jordan Schenk, Francis Smith, and Alexa Vaders. They are therefore appointed to the grade of Second Lieutenant in the United States Army, effective 16 May 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, the newly commissioned class of 2013. Please be seated. Second Lieutenant Ryan Holbein will now be presented with the Widener Alumni Sabre. 
This saber is awarded to the newly commissioned lieutenant in the Dauntless Battalion who has demonstrated the highest attributes of scholastic achievement, leadership excellence, and overall scholastic performance. Lieutenant Holbein will receive the saber from Mr. David McNulty, Esquire, Pennsylvania Military College Class of 1963. Lieutenant Holbein, could you come over here and join me? Stand at ease. Dr. Harris and Warrior Captain Christian, pleasure to meet you and hear from you. And distinguished guests, moms, dads, grandmothers, everybody who's here today to celebrate this great day. It is my honor and privilege to be asked to participate in this ceremony. It's a deeply moving and sentimental time for me, for this is the 50th anniversary of my graduation from this institution, which was then known as Pennsylvania Military College, PMC, the second oldest military college in the nation. It's also my golden anniversary of being commissioned as a second lieutenant on the parade field back behind Old Main. I come to you as a voice from the past bringing you a message of insight and truth for your future. It's the same message that we received as young incoming freshman cadets in 1959. That timeless message is this, that character counts. It counted then and it counts today more than ever. Dr. Harris's predecessor from generations past, Colonel Hyatt coined an epigram of truth for all young cadets at this institution. It is part of the wisdom literature of PMC and Widener that has stood the test of time and the devolution of our modern mores. His proverb was as follows, when wealth is lost, something is lost. When health is lost, excuse me, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. I had to say that to be able to leave the campus and. Uh, so I wouldn't be punished for that. When, wealth, when health is, wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. When character is lost, all is lost. In the opening lines of our alma mater, we sang, beneath the dome of PMC, the men in gray march by. The banners of our loyalty held ever bright and high. Though ye weary years have called us forth from home to foreign sod, the truths you taught shall hold us fast to country and to God. Weary years have called me and my classmates from home to foreign and sometime hostile sod. The truths we were taught under the dome and as symbolized by the saber have indeed held us fast to country and to God. Two of my classmates paid the ultimate price for the preservation of these truths by their combat service in Vietnam. On the plaque behind Lieutenant Smith, you will find their names. John Lance Gagan, affectionately known as Jack, and William James Stevenson, affectionately known as Buddy. There are other classmates uh, from different classes and different wars on these plaques as well. My friend Jack was the top cadet and president of our class. He was the brigade commander. He was a young man of character and integrity, one of the most distinguished military students in the entire nation in 1963. Like Jack, the recipient of this saber 50 years ago, you are like Jack, in that regard, uh, Lieutenant Holbein, in a historic event behind Old Main, retired and former President uh, Eisenhower, former five-star general, came to campus and he reviewed the Pennsylvania Corps of Cadets prior to our commissioning. In return, Jack Gagan presented a ceremonial saber to President Eisenhower, and we, the Corps of Cadets, were saluted and blessed by the Supreme Allied Commander of World War II and the President of the United States, the man who put one nation under God into our Pledge of Allegiance. 
Today, as an acclaimed leader of the Dauntless Battalion and a young lieutenant, you are the continuing heir and benefactor of that salute and blessing by General Eisenhower. By my presentation of the Sabre, I will link you back in time to that historic event in May of 1963. Two years after that, Jack would be killed in Vietnam in the Battle of the Adrang Valley. Jack's heroic story is portrayed in the Mel Gibson movie, We Were Soldiers. Jack's death was like his life, virtuous and noble. He received the Silver Star for gallantry in action in trying to save the life of one of his wounded troopers. It is with the sacred honor and cherished memory of Jack and Buddy, who was killed three months later, from my class, from, for Captain Nathan Roudenbush, class of 05, killed in Iraq, and on behalf of all the members, living and deceased, of the long gray line of PMC and the Dauntless Battalion, that the Sabre will be passed on to you. There's one caveat, however, the saber comes heavy with responsibility and symbolism. The good news is that it's lightened by the heartfelt prayers of your loved ones and all the members of the cadet corps that have preceded you. Receiving this saber makes you, it's much unlike to the anointing of a knight. On behalf of all your fellow officers, you are being sanctified and set apart for a noble and decent purpose. General Eisenhower told us, history does not long entrust the care of freedom to the weak or the timid. In Saving Private Ryan, Captain John Miller whispered in the ear of Private James Ryan, James, earn it, earn it. In World War I, in Flanders Field, Dr. John McRae passed the torch to a new generation, saying, if ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep. Abraham Lincoln spoke of the mystic cords of memory stretching from every battlefield and patriot grave to the living heart of all of you here today. On behalf of all those who have gone before, Jack, Buddy, Nathan, and all those yet to be commissioned, I charge you to earn it. Do not break faith. Do not break those mystic cords of memory. I charge you to be a person of firm character, a lieutenant of unshakable ethic, an officer of unmatched integrity. George Washington said when we assumed the soldier, we did not lay aside the citizen. You are to be a leader beyond reproach, a servant of inexhaustible patience and grace, a patriot aglow with zeal and passion for your country and constitution, and a model citizen and alumnus of the highest virtue and nobility. As fate would have it, today I am the same age that President Eisenhower was when that saber was presented in 1963. President Eisenhower said to us, God speed you, except for the inescapable obstacle imposed by 50 years difference in our ages, I'd be proud to follow where you will lead, end quote. I can say the same to you and to all the young lieutenants, except for the inescapable ob obstacle imposed by the impediment of 50 years difference in our ages, I too would be proud to follow you and all your fellow lieutenants wherever you will lead. God speed you and keep you all in his care. Lieutenant Holbein will now sheath the Corps Sabre. This event is a long-standing tradition carried on from the days of the Pennsylvania Military College when the cadet first captain would sheath the saber to signal the end of the academic year.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the playing of the Army song. Again, if you would pray with me, please do. Gracious God, we ask your favor to rest heavily upon the shoulders and the hearts of these young lieutenants. Send them into the hard places. Send them at the head of courageous soldiers. And we ask that your face shine upon them and your blessings be with them all their days. We pray in your mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Commissioners will now form a file to be congratulated by faculty and administration. On behalf of Lieutenant Colonel McDonald and the entire Dauntless Battalion, thank you for joining us today in this very special celebration. A reception will be held immediately following in the Alumni Auditorium Lobby and PMC Museum. Thank you. <laughs> 